now what you'll be doing for your project is uh, air quality modeling using a subset of air quality models called the screening model. Screening air quality model. Screening means the first or the, the first line of models or the simplest model for air quality modeling. And it also gives you a less accurate uh, picture of the air quality or the dispersion of the air pollution. The learning outcomes, by the end of this, you'll be able to uh, describe the important components of air screen. You'll be able to run air screen. Air screen is a screening air quality model. For a one source air quality modeling with terrain, we're going to skip building downwash. And then you'll be able to present the air screen results in your uh, project report. So, aside from screening models, what other models are there? There's the refined models. So, the screen model, one of them is the air screen, and it's a model to estimate the worst case one hour average concentration from a single source. So the source can be a point source or it can be an area source. The good thing about this model is that you don't need meteorology data input. Although in your project, I would require you to analyze some meteorology data to give you some idea of how to get this data, very important data. And because it's not so accurate, the estimates are always higher than air mod, means that it gives a conservative prediction. And we like to have a conservative picture of the dispersion of air pollution instead of having a too liberal uh, prediction. means that we, are, we say that it's low, but it's actually quite high. It's better to say high, but it's low, right? But the problem with this one is that most of the time when you run it, it's not going to meet any regulatory. Uh, most of the time, it's not going to be below the standard, it's going to be higher. So once you run, you get the result, you compare to MVQS, you find that the values are higher because it gives you the worst case. And then when it's higher, then you have to go to the refined models. So when you run refined models, then it'll be lower because it takes into account more parameters. It should be more accurate by using a refined model. But if you run the screening models and you found that it's lower, then the value, then we can be safe to say that it's not going to affect because it's already lower. Even at the worst case, it's already lower. So you don't have to go to the refined models. And the refined model is the air mod model. And air screen also uses air mod, but it makes a lot of assumptions. So what is air mod? So the air mod uh, is a model that requires detailed meteorology, surface, and upper data. So I guess this is the difficult part for you to get upper data values. So you can get meteorology data, and that's the surface value. The station is at the surface, and we can easily get meteorology data from the surface, from these stations. But to get upper data is more difficult because you can only obtain it from weather balloons. You've heard of weather balloons. Every 6 or 12 hours, the airport releases a weather balloon that measures the temperature profile of the, of the atmosphere. This is needed for the navigation of aircraft. So they have to do it every day, at least once a day. So you need to use this data for you to uh, run air mod, the refined model. So that makes it more difficult. And you need detailed meteorology as well. Uh, although here, we can get detailed meteorology already without much problem. So the, I guess the lynch pinch here is the upper data, which is more difficult to get. Now, the estimates are lower than air screen and closer to actual concentration. That's when we need to run refined models. The system requirements, you have to say that these are pretty old models. They were developed, I think the last time it was updated was 2005 or something, or 2008. And it was first uh, developed 1960s or 1970s. And then they just changed, uh, they just uh, updated or they just uh, corrected. They removed some of the bugs throughout the years. So that's why you see the requirements are not that Difficult for you to meet. I think all your laptops will be able to run the model. So Windows XP 32-bit, I think nobody uses XP anymore, right? Maybe the computer lab uses XP, but not your laptops, I think. 32-bit uh, or 64-bit, Windows 7, some of you still use Windows 7, I think. Windows 8. So most PCs built since year 2000 can run Air Screen or the refined model, so you should be able to run the model because you'll be running the model on your laptops. 
but you need additional software. This command prompt software is already inside built-in Windows, so you don't have to download this. You need to use this to run air screen. Uh, you also need to use Notepad. I think you all know what Notepad is. To edit the input file or to read the output file. It's available in all Windows OS operating system. You use this one to view and edit the input output files. And then concerning the GIS. You've heard of GIS. It's the Geographical Information System. And most of the time you know that uh, maybe you've heard somewhere that it's a very uh, expensive software. Actually, there is uh, open software versions of GIS. Like just now, uh, Dr. John mentioned a few ones, like the PCI, Geometrica, and so on. Those are all GIS software, but those are like very expensive. Um, and I think in USM, there's only one or two licenses, right? And it's only for a particular research project, and you don't let other people use. So what to do? So we use open source um, solutions or open source versions of softwares, and most of the time there are, and I think it's just as good. There's this QGIS. Let me introduce you to this GIS software called the QGIS or the Quantum GIS. It's a free open source GIS software. You can search Google for it and download it. You need to use this so that you can convert the TIFF file that you download from um, data repositories online to this DEM format in which AirScreen can recognize. You just need to use the GIS software to convert TIFF to DEM because you can't do it on your own. You have to use the software to do that. So uh, this is another software you need to download. And Google Earth, I think all of you, not Google Maps. In your browser, is Google Earth. It's a separate software. It's also a free software. It's free if you're not using it for commercial purposes. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can download it freely to use it for this project. And uh, you use it to display the results, or at least to show the point or the, the point of the, the, the location of the source and also the the concentration at different points from the source. Right. So overview of AirScreen is made up of all these components. There's the AirScreen model. We need to input meteorology into it. Although, like I said, you might not have, uh, you might not need to use meteorology for AirScreen, but uh, we need to have some idea of what the meteorology is. Like say the ranges of temperature, the ranges of wind direction, not wind direction, wind speed, and so on. So meteorology goes inside the air quality model emission goes into, that's the emission rate, remember, the Q value, the terrain from the DAM file converted using QGIS, and meteorology is also affected by land use. This is the albedo, bone ratio, and um, surface roughness values. Goes inside here, this one inputs into here, and once you combine all of this, you get the results. So uh, this land use is a constant value, it's obtained online, or the, from those tables that I showed just now. Uh, meteorology here is a variable value because it changes, temperature changes with season, with time of day, with weeks. You can also obtain this online, I'll teach you how to do that. Or you can get meteorology data from models as well because there are uh, numerical weather forecasting models or the NWF or NWP models. I think maybe if you go below, you notice there is a optional section called WARF, weather research forecasting, right? So even if you don't have uh, meteorology data, real meteorology data coming from the station, you can model meteorology data using these models and you, and that model data you can put inside here to to uh, uh, to calculate the results. And then I think some of the term papers that you read, you notice that there's a coupling of models, right? This model gives the emission, this model gives the meteorology and so on. So this is some something like the same same structure. So terrain data is constant, it's obtained online. You can get it from a website, I'll tell you where to get it. Emission is where you need to, uh, it's more difficult. This is the most difficult part actually, because uh, this is what makes your modeling project unique. Uh, or your modeling, the real modeling project unique, your, your actual modeling project, I think I'll just ask you to model one gram per second because you don't have the actual emission data. Just one is okay for a good first estimate. So, but if in actual fact, if you want to use, uh, want to run air quality models, you need to get the actual emission values, and then that requires you to go and sample, um, or you need to at least do mass balance, or at the worst, you can set a regulation limit and use that limit as the worst case scenario. 
So these are all the different softwares in the AirScreen model for you to run, for you to use AirScreen. Make Mat is a, is a separate software. B-P-I-P-P-R-M. I'm not sure why they use this acronym, but, <laughs> but yeah, but that's what they use, so we're going to use that. Uh, this is another software, AirScreen, I think you've heard. AirMod is the actual modeling software. We feed this data into AirScreen and it goes into AirMod. Emission is not really a software. We just give to, have to give a value. AirMap is, the, is another software that um, receives terrain data and land use data. So this one, one, two, three, four, and five, I think. Five different executables or software. Different softwares, you know. But you just need to double click it and it will run. But you need to give the proper input files. So uh, this is about AirMod. The difference between the refined model and the AirScreen model is that they don't have MakeMed and they don't have AirScreen. Because this MakeMed simulates the meteorology of the area. Um, it gives you a rough estimate of meteorology. Right? Remember, it doesn't require meteorology, right? So it has to get meteorology from somewhere. So this MakeMed simulates it for you, gives a rough estimate of values of meteorology data. And then AirScreen summarize them and put inside AirMod, but if for a, a refined model, we need to give the actual IMAT values. So even though it looks simpler here, uh, it's actually more complicated than this one because a lot of data here you need to get. So the, what makes it difficult is actually to get all this data, this detailed data. And that's the differentiate between the refined model and the uh, screening model. So overview of AirScreen. You need to download the following executable files. Take note of the term that I use, the .exe. Have you ever seen this type of file before? If you use Windows, definitely you have. That's why you cannot run this on Mac, because Mac doesn't recognize .exe. So we have to download these files, put it inside a folder in your computer somewhere, maybe preferably in your documents or downloads folder. Don't put it on your desktop. Put it somewhere else beside your desktop. So these are the different softwares. There's the AirScreen, AirMod, MakeMed, AirMap, BP, PPRM. And uh, this is if you want to plot it using Google Earth. So notice the names here. The same as the names here. So AirScreen is used to prepare the needed screening files for AirMod. AirMod is to actually run the model. MakeMed is to generate the map data or the meteorology data. AirMap is to process the terrain data. BPIPPRM is to model building knowledge, but we won't be using this because I said that we're going to skip building knowledge. And AirPlot if you want to plot it on Google Map, Google Earth. Now you can download uh, these softwares from these sites. And um, I actually put the EXE in eLearning portal yesterday. So you don't have to go to the site to download it. You can just get downloaded from the e-learning portal. You can also go here and then get a feel of what it looks like because the ones I put there, is, it, maybe it's going to be outdated. So if you go to this website, then you get the latest version of the model. So to summarize, the hardest task in air quality modeling is not to actually run the model, but it's actually to acquire quality representative input data. That's the most difficult part. The random model is actually just press enter, it runs. Nothing else. You don't have to do much, you don't have to do anything like hacking or something to run the model. You just press enter, if everything is there, it runs. And if you don't have good data, garbage in, garbage out. Because it will give you some values, whatever, regardless. You give bad data, it will still give you value. Good data, it will give you value. But the worst thing is you don't know whether it's right or wrong. So that's why your input data is the most important your meteorology data, your emission data, your terrain data has to be correct. Because whatever it is, if it's all there, it's going to run. It's going to give you some value, but it's not going to be correct. And you're going to make decisions based on that wrong values. 